beautiful butterflies welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is Beverly and it is so lovely to see you today in this video we are going to be talking about cast a spell a really great book so grab your tea and let's get talking <laughs> So before we get into the book, let's talk about the tea. This is called Sweater Weather and it's by Tea Spectral. It's a collaboration with It's a Charming Life. I did a whole video about this and um, it's so yummy. It has a smell that's like a memory smell and um, yeah, I'm still waiting for scented candles. It's just the perfect cup of tea for curling up on a cold, wintry, horrible day with your dog on your lap. My dog's always on my lap. This is Gizmo. Grab a cup of sweater weather. It is chucking it down outside. It's not, it's barely daylight out there. It's horrible. So I'm cozying up and it's just the perfect cup of tea for that. So I really feel like it's a great cup of tea to have with this book. And this is my first witchy kind of book review. I am going to start doing book reviews on this channel. So if you enjoy that kind of content, don't forget to hit subscribe but um, yeah I really want to talk about this this book was recommended in a video by Hearth Witch I will leave her a link to her channel down below if you're a beginner um, she's an amazing channel to watch she does she's got like a whole playlist of like beginner witchcraft kind of videos and she is so knowledgeable I love watching her videos I've learned so much from her and yeah she's one of my favorites so definitely make sure that you head down into the description click on all the links buy yourself some nice tea curl up with a video or a copy of this book there will be an affiliate link down in the description so don't forget to check that out so you can get this book for yourself so this is called before you cast a spell understanding the power of magic by Carl McCollman. Now this is, I think he's Wiccan, but it's just, it's basically a book that it doesn't matter what religion you are, it's just about magic and working with magic, any kind of magic. So I honestly didn't know that I'd been doing magic for a long time until I read this book because I love prayer, I love manifesting things, I love working with vision boards and stuff like that. So to then be like, oh my God, it's all in here was really a big epiphany moment. So um, thank you, Hearth Witch. I didn't know I'd been a witch for a long time. And I'm sure a lot of people who come to read this book won't have realised that they've been doing this stuff for a long time because it covers a lot of things. What I really, really loved about this book is that it's short. There's seven chapters, so I read it in a week. I read a chapter a day because I really wanted to... I mean, you could just sit and read the whole lot in a day, and I'm sure a lot of people will because it is... I don't know how many pages there are. There's only 142 pages, and if I was reading, you know, a fiction book, I would probably devour this in a day. But because it's something that I'm really interested in and I really wanted to let it sink into my pores, I took a whole week to read it. But I really, really enjoyed it. I got so much out of it. Each chapter you can take on its own. But as a whole, it teaches you the basics, the behind the scenes, if you like, of those books that you can get in Waterstones or in, I don't know, where did I get my books from? The Works. Those sorts of places that are like spells for love life or spells for I don't know whatever you know the sort of books I mean and those books never tell you the ethics behind the book or how it works it's just kind of do this and then everything will be okay and um, should you be doing that I don't know this book really covers that kind of thing it talks about the power behind magic and how with power comes great responsibility as we all know um, and it's true there's a lot of power that comes behind this when you are focusing magic or doing a spell you are calling on a higher being whatever you believe in 
to make that happen you're calling on the universe's energy and drawing up the earth's energy to make a spell happen you're putting a lot of intention behind it whether it's just a recipe that you're doing and you're a, a house witch if you're a kitchen witch you know if it's something that you're just dabbling in please don't dabble but um it really talks about how you're harnessing this really incredible power and in order to do that correctly there are rules that you have to understand and it explained a lot of things that I'd been kind of wondering about and thinking about like how does that work and what does that do and how does this happen you know a lot of spells that you see online or you read in a book it doesn't explain the hows chapter one in this explains the power and how responsible you have to be with that power and I really appreciated that Hello. it's also not just talking about spells it's talking about prayers it's talking about manifestations vision boards that kind of thing it's all magic and I didn't realize that although now when I think about it of course it is but I didn't realize that um, I think it's just because we have our ideas of what a witch does you know with her magic cauldron mine just has tea in it at the moment but is that what a witch does no of course it's not um there's so much that goes into witchcraft and spells and all of that and i'm learning so much at the moment but i have a few like spell books like moon spells and spells for this and spells for that that i've picked up um just while i've been on my travels but this book really helped me to understand exactly what i'm doing it also has a whole chapter about the myths and assumptions that we have about witches and about witchcraft and debunks quite a lot of them and that was really eye-opening i really enjoyed that chapter because of course we have that picture in our head of the woman with the conical hat flying on her broomstick we've all watched practical magic and hocus pocus but the reality is very different and I really appreciate that chapter. It just kind of broke down some of those walls and those expectations. Oh. It really broke down some of those walls and expectations that we have about magic and about witches. I, uh, I really enjoyed that chapter. I probably read it twice, if I'm going to be honest, because I just enjoyed it so much. It also talks about the ethics of spell work and the ethics that you have to stand by. There is one law that I know is, I think, is it pagan or Wiccan? I'm not sure. But it's the threefold law. So if you are doing a spell, for example, for revenge on somebody, that will come back to you three times as powerful. If you're doing a spell for a friend to help heal their broken heart, that will come back to you three times. It's also seen a lot in different cultures as karma, that sort of thing. It's going to come back onto you. So whatever you're putting into that spell, just be aware of that. Just be aware of what you're thinking of yes there might be somebody bullying you at work and you might have spoken to your boss about it you might have had a word with that person about it and nothing's changed now you can do a banishment spell to make that person disappear which could have so many consequences and could be taken so many ways or you could do a spell saying that you want that person to have a really great job offer and to move away to a better house and to have a better life and to learn from their experiences and to grow as a person see what i mean the ethics behind the spells you're doing it also talked about the ethics behind love spells and this is something that i always struggle with because there's a lot of love spell talk out there in these bo books that you can pick up like get the person that you like to notice you that kind of thing instead of trying to control that person with that kind of spell why not instead do a spell where you learn to love yourself more and you grow in confidence and you stand out from the crowd for yourself rather than just to get that person's attention and then from that that person yes they might notice you and you might end up being with that person or you might find out you don't need a person in order to be happy and either way you're going to be happy with yourself so i loved that 
I love that talk about the ethics about it. So I really enjoyed that. I remember doing ethics when I studied law at college and it was really interesting. So that part really, I just got a lot out of it. I think it's um, something that's so important to talk about, the ethics of the things that we're doing, the ethics of whether you should be asking for this and asking for that. Should you be expecting magic to make everything better? I don't think we should. So, um, yeah, that was really cool. I would also like to mention at the very back of the book is a brilliant glossary where it just explains the, um, the different terms that they talk about, which was really useful as a beginner. And obviously, if you're going to be reading a book like this, you probably are a beginner. So that was really cool. And it also has a whole section of further study. So more books that you're going to really get a lot out of which I'll be digging into for sure. I will say that there were a couple of downsides to this book and we have to talk about them. One I would say is that the writer constantly refers to goddess. Now to me God is genderless because we're made in their image so whether you're male or female or transgender or you don't associate yourself with a gender or you're on a spectrum or fluid whatever it doesn't matter because God's the same you are God do you see what I mean so just saying goddess I struggled with and my husband started reading this and he was like who's this goddess he keeps talking about and I was like I literally have no idea I do not know I know that I think the person is Wiccan yeah because he's written books about Wicca magic so maybe it's a Wiccan thing I do not know um I do know that like the ethics of this of spell work and magic shouldn't really have a religion attached to it and they do talk about the different religions to do with magic and magic use as well I'm an omnist I don't believe in man-made religion I think God is in all of them because it's just different cultures and how they understand God so to me, God is genderless and religionless. He's just, they're just chilling up there waiting for us to get back to them. So for me, that didn't really resonate. And I did struggle with reading Goddess all the time. To me, God is genderless. And then we have Mother Earth and Father Sky, who supports us both sides. Uh, yin Yang, all that kind of thing it all kind of slots into place for me because I study all the different religions I didn't fully resonate with that but um, if you're Wiccan I suppose that will completely resonate and you will understand who this goddess is that they talk about a lot um, overall though I thought it was a brilliant book like if you look through I have highlighted so much of this book so I can just come back and find a juicy part that really resonated with me um at one point I was highlighting and my husband said uh why don't you just highlight the whole book and I was like uh, I just might it's so good I got a lot out of it overall I think it just pulled together all the different things that I've been studying and reading helped me understand um, how magic works a little bit better and just help me to get my head around it all because it's it is all very difficult to understand in a lot of ways so I enjoyed the book I would definitely recommend it if you're just starting out or if you've been practicing for a while and you've never really thought about the ethics of the spell work that you've been doing check this out again there is a link down in the description for this book no extra cost to you if you use that link i will get some money back to continue bringing content like this to you folks so definitely check that out i will also have links down below to the tea because oh my gosh it's so nice mm -mm -mm. i'll have links to tea spectral and also to its charming life I'll also leave a link to Jonas's art work. He's an incredible artist, does like fantasy storytelling. Oh, it's just, oh. And he did the artwork for the little tin that you saw at the beginning of the video. 
so I will leave a link to him as well his artwork is all over my hallway I just love it so much so go and check out all the links down below the hearth which will be down there as well she's brilliant for us beginners she has some brilliant videos so go and check her out don't forget if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more book reviews head down there and leave me a cheeky little like so I know that you enjoyed this video leave me a comment have you read this book would you like to are you going to be buying it all the things let's get talking everything to do with it and while you're down there why not click that subscribe button I'm so excited I would love to get to a thousand subscribers by my birthday which is in March so if you're watching my videos you enjoy my content but you're not yet subscribed don't forget to hit that little subscribe button ring that little bell so you always know when I upload I'm usually here Mondays and Fridays my health permitting I do my very best I hope you enjoyed this video I really wish you a lovely lovely weekend ahead I hope you have a lovely day today and I will see you next time. Goodbye. Are you uh, making sure I've got the shot right, mate? Hey? Okay, and action.